looking at you, Ready Player One. Hello and welcome to Films and That. My name's Sam Hall. Shane Meadows' film This Is England was an indie hit around the world. Uh, but to international audiences, comparisons were drawn. Uh, there were connections made to American History X and Romper Stomper. Those who weren't familiar with Meadows' previous films should be forgiven for thinking that this was just another cautionary tale about the dangers of radicalism. This Is England was actually a very personal film for Meadows, that while the comments on extremism are certainly there, ultimately this is a film about the events and people that shape our lives. It's about the good, bad and ugly side of what was once known as a cerebral disease. Whilst nostalgia is, is often dismissed as something trivial, I think people lose sight of how intrinsic it is to our identity, because there exists generational communal nostalgia as well as personal nostalgia. Meadows' leading boy in This Is England is Sean, played by a young Thomas Turgis. He's effectively a projection of who Meadows was when he reached the second decade of his life. Sean lacks identity. He has suffered a great loss, his father, at a significant age. And with that, he lost his communal spirit, his sense of self. Becoming a skinhead gave him that identity back, made him feel part of something again. The one thing about This Is England that I think could be misconstrued about it is that it could be seen as, as anti-nationalist or unpatriotic. It's difficult to dismiss such a claim after witnessing Sean dispose of the St George's flag by throwing it into the sea at the end of the film. But I view this disposal as a symbolic moment of rebirth for Sean. In our youth we make mistakes, and this is indicative of Sean's decision to side with Stephen Graham's combo after the skinhead gang splits. Sean makes this decision because he is spurred on by the loss of his father. He wants to make him proud by trying to serve his country, but it takes a tragic set of circumstances to shock him into regret for that decision. Sean never loses sight of his national pride, but to him, the St. George's flag he owned was tainted. It nearly cost him the life of one of his friends. Meadows realises that nostalgia isn't just something to be marketed. Our memories shape who we are and define us. Uh, while Sean has some regrets, he also makes friends for life, gets into new music and finds places that he can call a second home. When Meadows released the follow-up miniseries, This Is England 86, the film The Nostalgia, Twin the Regret and Pain focused not on the racist aspects of skinhead culture, but on something more personal. This time, the focus character was not Sean, but Lull, played by Vicky McClure. Whilst the rest of the gang are getting pumped up for the World Cup, the infamous Hand of God tournament, Lull is struggling with a sense of self-loathing brought on by the return of her abusive father. This internal struggle puts strain on her relationship with Woody, played by Joseph Gilgan, and a lack of self-control leads her to commit adultery with Woody's best friend Milky, played by Andrew Shim. Professor Gerber of the University of Buffalo has said, There are positive uses to which memory, even painful memory, may be put in the effort to confront challenges to personal identities or such massive changes in the lives of an individual. What we have to remember with This Is England is that, with each incarnation it takes, we are looking back on the lives of these characters retrospectively. This is, after all, a period piece. At the 80s, uh, specifically the, the Thatcher era, at the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 90s, um, didn't have quite that same feeling that uh, Reagan's USA did in the 80s, that sense of national pride. Uh, it, it was a bit more tainted for a lot of people. Towards the end of Margaret Thatcher's time in office, even some of her most ardent supporters had to resign to the fact that she had been a divisive figure. That feeling is reflected in Meadows' This Is England series. Um, but the positives aren't outweighed by the negatives. The series is chock full of moments of humour. The joyous moments in the film resonate just as much as the tragic ones. And you really get the sense that Meadows has had a lot of fun digging up the past. He clearly loved the era. Cornell University and UC Santa Cruz have made links to the positive effects of listening to music from your youth. Not just music that was relevant at the time, but the music played by their parents whilst growing up too. This is England is noteworthy for how it reflects on fashion and music. And of course, this is nothing new in film. Quadrophenia, released in 1979, was the This Is England of that era. It centres around mod culture of the 50s, continuing the pattern of one's desire to revisit a decade 20 to 30 years prior. Interestingly, in the UK, mod culture made a comeback in the 80s, as is highlighted in This Is England 86. Perhaps this was part of a result of Quadrophenia's iconic status. Clearly, This Is England is nothing new, and recent history has shown this pattern shows no signs of slang. For Meadows, skinhead culture was much, much more than nationalism. In fact, for him, that was a very minor part of it. Skinheads of the 80s, just like the skinheads of the 70s, were huge reggae fans. 
Bands such as the Toots and the Maytals, and even the late great Bob Marley himself, were highly influential on the young Shady Meadows. It's difficult to not get caught up in the nostalgia. The Ben Sherman shirts, the Doc Martens boots and the braces. As the series progressed, so does the music and fashion. By the time This Is England 90 comes around, most of the gang aren't skinheads anymore. They're listening to Happy Mondays, bands that hail from the Manchester scene, and drum and bass. Now it's Lol, Milky and Woody who are old hat. The new generation has arrived, and the skinheads are getting nostalgic for that period that took place in the first film. If you take anything away with this, I hope if you haven't seen them already, go and check out This Is England 86, 88 and 90. I think they're just as memorable as the film. They show us that even if the past is marred with tragedy, pretending it never happened can be just as devastating, because as the saying goes, they were the best of times, they were the worst of times. I think the sense of community and identity they shine a light on shows that there is a brighter side to all this regret and the contrast makes it all that more memorable. The good times are made better when we know they helped us get through the bad times. And we all make mistakes, we all suffer. It's not a bad thing to learn from those mistakes. This Is England for me is a much greater coping tool than a product which just wants to remind me about all the stuff my money could have bought me had I been much richer when I was younger. I'm looking at you, Ready Player One. That's it for this time on Films and That. Please like and subscribe. I hope to see you again next time. Bye.